Um, now, there are a great many sites around the world orientated towards stars, and many of those sites are orientated towards Cygnus. We'll try and understand why. For instance, this is the Temple of the Foliate Cross at Palenque in, uh, in the Yucatan. Well, it's actually just off the Yucatan, but it's a Maya complex and it is um, orientated towards the setting of that same star. So it's exactly the same orientation as at least three or four of the main enclosures at Gebekli Tepe, all of which face towards the setting of Deneb um, at the time of the construction of the monuments. Now, when I worked out the connection with Cygnus to do with these enclosures and its association with the vulture, one stone had not been found, uh, and this is one which uh, Alistair talked about earlier, which is known as the Vulture Stone, uh, Pillar 43 in Enclosure D. It's just to the left of that hold stone that I pointed out earlier on. Um, and by the way, it's the axis of these structures that seem to be focused towards the north-northwest and the setting of this particular star. So, there are various different interpretations, as Alistair said, to do with the vulture stone. Um, however, what we do know is that the scorpion almost certainly represents Scorpius. It's probably one of the earliest representations, if not the oldest representation, of the constellation, or the zodiacal constellation of Scorpius. Um, and it was suggested a long while ago by some Armenian uh, researchers that the vulture that's actually seen on the stone is Cygnus. Uh, this was nothing to do with me. But um, my colleague uh, Rodney Howe, an engineer, uh, has worked out, I think, uh, very precisely what the vulture stone represents. And if we see the head of the stone as representing the horizon up to the sky and the, st and the stem of the stone actually representing the underworld, and the line between them representing the horizon, everything works out perfectly if you orientate the ball that is seen on the wing of the vulture. If that becomes the northern celestial pole, the turning point of the heavens, everything synchronises together. The vulture becomes the constellation of Cygnus, the scorpion is exactly as it should be as Scorpius and it's rising up from the underworld towards the vulture itself um, and the hole represented by this ball on the top of the vulture is the so-called hole in the sky that in many shamanic traditions, particularly in Central Asia and in Siberia, is the entrance point into the sky world. In other words, the vulture seems to be protecting or guarding this entrance into the sky world, as if you almost have to go through this vulture to reach it. And this vulture, we now know, represents Cygnus. Why are we talking about birds? Because birds are the symbol of the soul in an astral form. When we die, whether it be in actuality or within a shamanic death trance, it was seen, and still is, in many cultures today, that the soul takes the form of a bird to move from this world to the next. Uh, and this is the reason why these birds are so important to this story. Cygnus was seen as a primal cause, a place of origin of life and the universe in many different cultures around the world. Uh, as I said, mostly it's seen as, as, as a swan, but there are various other birds involved. In Egypt, uh, Cygnus was the goose, Gengen were the great cackler that gives out this honk to create the universe and bring the world into being. Um, he was an avatar of the god Geb. Uh, in, uh, in Hindu and in Vedic tradition, it was the swan goose Hamsa, uh, a form of Brahma uh, that brought the universe into being by also giving out a divine call that resonates and creates the physical universe. Uh, in Hungary, uh, the queen of the fairies, Ilona, um, took the form of a swan to give birth to an egg that becomes the sun. 
Uh, and although this is a Hungarian tradition...